Uh, I'm very sad to report this morning uh, that the Queen of Soul, Aretha Franklin, has died. We've been reporting over the past few days that she had been receiving hospice care in her home in Detroit. There you see her, an American legend. The 76-year-old whose career spanned six decades, a woman who got 44 Grammy nominations, won 18 Grammys, a woman who blessed us all with her music, bringing the country together, her countless chart toppers like Respect, like Chain of Fools, and of course, natural woman, Aretha Franklin, has died at her home in Detroit. Here is a look at the remarkable woman and her remarkable career. She was the queen of soul who garnered respect on and off stage. Born Aretha Louise Franklin in Memphis, Tennessee, the four octave range vocalist got her start at a young age in her father's church in Detroit. The incomparable songstress often credited him with nurturing her burgeoning talent. Very early on, he taught me a number of things uh, having to do with timing and phrasing and different things like that and coaching me in different ways. He did say at one point that one day I would sing for kings and queens. He did say that and uh, I have. Franklin won her first of many Grammys in 1967 for Best Female Rhythm and Blues Solo Vocal Performance for Respect. It was a civil rights uh, mantra. I perfectly uh, thought it applied well. Everybody wants respect. Who doesn't want respect? As a young woman in the 60s, she watched her father unite with Martin Luther King Jr. to fight for equality. In 1968, she would sing at King's memorial service. All we need is new days, uh. The recording artist would go on to win 18 Grammys throughout her incredible career. She also took home awards for hits like Chain of Fools and Freeway of Love. Franklin was also ahead of her time with a string of firsts. In 1987, she was the first woman to be inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame and seven years later became the youngest recipient of a Kennedy Center honor. Some no. of the things that have happened are unbelievable. Uh, who, would have, who, th who would have thought it? But uh, nevertheless, it did happen. God is good. In the 80s, Franklin adapted her music for a new generation, cruising away with a Grammy for 1987's I Knew You Were Waiting, her chart-topping duet with George Michael. With her voice and her formidable achievements in music and films like The Blues Brothers, Aretha is often considered to be one of the greatest singers of all time. In 2015, Franklin graced the Kennedy Center stage again, this time to honor Carole King. As she sang, President Obama wiped a tear from his eye. Her performance went viral. I come treated of the sweet. She also sang for Obama and Presidents Jimmy Carter and Bill Clinton at their inaugurations. However, the woman who sang for kings and queens reveled in being good at the most important job in the world. I've been uh, a wonderful and a very good mother and am a very good mother. That's what I am most proud of first. A loving mother and a decorated diva, Franklin was most of all grateful for her music, her longevity, and her audiences throughout her career. I think for me, it's the love of the music, um, loyal fans. Aretha Franklin, the queen of soul, whose reign transcends generations. There she is, Aretha Franklin, the queen of soul. Let me read you part of the statement that we just got from her publicist. Quote, in one of the darkest moments of our lives, we are not able to find the appropriate words to express the pain in our hearts. We've lost the matriarch and rock of our family, the love she had for her children, her grandchildren, her nieces, her nephews, and her cousins knew no bounds. Let me bring in my colleague, my friend, Don Lemon, who had the extraordinary gift, Don, 
of knowing Aretha Franklin. You had her on your show. She was your friend. What are you thinking about her right now? Um, I'm sorry, Poppy. Oh. I just, um, I've just woke up and, and got the news. I'm so sorry. I didn't really expect to have this reaction, but um, it's, it's sad. And for the past couple of days, people have been, um, you know, going to see her and reaching out to her. And, um, you know, there was, there was information that I knew that I couldn't really say because the family did not want that out. But, um, you know, for the last couple of days, it has not been good. Yeah. And, you know, truly, we have lost a legend and, um, and a good person. She said that she wanted to be known as a good mother, but... She was a, a good mother to not only just her four sons, but to her, to so many people around the world like me. She would just text me out of the blue and say, I saw something you did on CNN, and I'm just so mm -hmm. proud of you. And oh. you're doing such a great job. And to think that that won't happen anymore um, is just really um, awful. Oh, oh Don. What a blessing she was to you, to you personally in your life, to so many people. Um, stay with me, my friend, if you can, and, and let's listen to her because, you know, the words that President Obama has used to describe her, I remember when he said, for me, she will remind me of my humanity. And he said that if he were stranded on a desert island and had 10 records to take, hers, no doubt, uh, would be in the collection. Let's listen to her remarkable voice, her remarkable talent when she sang in front of President Obama and so many others at the Kennedy Center. Don, you listened to that. It was that performance that brought the president, President Obama, to tears. And you think about the young girl who started singing at her father's church in Detroit, Don. Yeah. Um, yeah, and for me, that, you know, it goes back to the 60s. You know, I'm a child of the 60s. I was born in 1966, and I just remember, um, you know, this Aretha Franklin's music being the soundtrack to my childhood at every... Mm -hmm. At every family gathering, at every barbecue, every picnic, on the way to school, in the car, on family vacations, when we listen to, you know, Aretha, and um, there is no voice and no one ever that will be like her. Some people have a gift that there's music in their their voice. They just open their mouths and the song just drops out, and that is that was Aretha Franklin. And you, you, she could not, she was unmatched. But I think that a lot of that also came from the church and, and her father, because, you know, she yeah. grew up with her father in the church, Reverend Teal Franklin, but that all came from the church. And you have to think about, she, there was no auto-tune for Aretha Franklin. She didn't need that. Aretha Franklin <laughs> could get and play the piano and other instruments, and she would just sit there, and she was music. And yeah. it's hard to even think that I'm referring to her um in the past tense right now, but I know what she would say. She would say, "You, I, I want you to be strong, Don, and I want you to be the voice, and so I'm going to put on my best self, and I'm going to um, be there to represent Aretha Franklin, oh, and, yeah. and we should all celebrate her, her very wonderful, wonderful, wonderful life. She's an amazing person. No question. And you know what, Don, beyond the gift that you just beautifully laid out that was, was her music, it was the gift that she gave all of us uh, in bringing this country together, right? And I, I just want to read something yeah. that 
that Meredith Artley, a woman and executive here, runs, runs CNN Digital, said and wrote earlier this week that stood out to me so much I saved it. Okay, this is what Meredith said about, about Aretha Franklin. A black woman who sings about respect, about being a woman, a moving voice and a central figure in civil rights, and she said that her life and her legacy may speak to a need for some soul and some grace right now in turbulent times, Don. What do you think? Yeah, I think, I think, I think that Meredith is, is, is exactly right. Um, I know that I spoke to her regarding, you know, what was going on in the country. Some of it she spoke about on when I interviewed her last on CNN. I think it was in 2016. Um, and we talked about uh, criminal justice. We talked about police brutality. We talked about, um, you know, African-Americans being uh, killed um, by police. And she had very strong, she felt very strongly about that because of her son. And she said, you know, raising um, black kids now, or black boys now is different. And it's all, it's all out there on CNN if you want to go look at it. And she was, she was very adamant about that. But I, the reason I'm saying that is because of her role in the civil rights movement. You know, with Dr. King, she would go to churches and sing with Dr. King and sing for the movement. Uh, and she was very much a part of that. And, I, and in one of the interviews, I said, Aretha, you know, you... Sorry. I said, Aretha, you know, you were on the front line. She said, I wasn't on the front line. She goes, I was in there, but I wasn't on the front line. And she credits people like John Lewis, of course, and Dr. King for being on the front line. But yeah. her music really played out during that. If you, if you look at her... When she really came to prominence, when she went secular, it was at the height of the civil rights movement, and, it, and her music became the soundtrack to that as well. Yeah. Of course, she, she sang, you know, she taped a sing at the memorial service of, of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Uh, Precious Lord, take my hand, another moment no one will forget. Um, Don, stay with me uh, if you can. I know how difficult and how personal this is for you as well. I'm just glad we have your voice in this conversation. Let me also bring in Roger Friedman. He's a close friend of Aretha Franklin. Uh, he is also with Showbiz 411. Roger, can you hear me? Yes, good morning. Good morning. Tell me how you knew Aretha. Um, I met Aretha about 20 years ago uh, uh, through Clive Davis, yeah. and who was her great friend and uh, her mentor. And um, she, Aretha liked to come to New York. Uh, she loved Detroit. She loved living in Detroit, but she uh, got bored there easily. And uh, because she didn't fly, she couldn't go to that many places. So she would load up her tour bus uh, with her, a couple of family members and a bodyguard and come to New York for a week or two weeks to see Broadway shows, go to dinner. And she would call me and say, what should we do? What's the, what's the hot thing? And... That's how we really uh, solidified our friendship. And um, uh, we had a lot of fun experiences uh, going to see various shows, holding Broadway curtains because we were late. And um, mm -hmm. she loved the theater. Uh, we went to see a, a, a show a couple of years ago. There was a show playing on Broadway called Baby, It's You, which was a review of music from the early 60s on Scepter Records. And... Um, there was a young woman in the show. We were sitting in the third row. And there was a young, young woman in the show who comes forward uh, to sing I uh, Say a Little Prayer for You, the Burt Bacharach song. And she didn't know Aretha was in the audience. And the, the, the girl came forward to sing and leaned forward, and Aretha started singing back to her from the, audi from the third row. And I thought the girl was going to faint right off the stage. Um, and that's what she would do. She just uh, she embraced life, Aretha. She just, uh, she loved, she loved to eat, obviously. She loved to go to theater. She loved uh, music of all kinds. She loved to really live, is what you're saying. I mean, she, she loved lived li this life fully. She, um, oh, she lived the life fully, and, you know, she lived many lives. You know, yeah. long before I met her, you know, she had had her, you know, great success on Atlantic yeah. Records. Yeah. Um, I met her when she, uh, when Clive Davis brought her to Arista Records around uh, the mid '80s. Uh, that's when I first met her, and um, uh, she loved the, the second career that she had. Uh, and w and the only thing is that she wouldn't fly. So uh, right. you know, so I would say to her, 
Uh, people are calling all the time saying, can you bring Aretha to Europe? Mm -hmm. uh, we'll pay her a million dollars a show. And she'd say, right. oh, oh, I'll do that. And I'll say, really, how are we going to get there? And she'd say, well, yeah. there must be some kind of amphibious machine that we could get into. <laughs> oh. Roger, hey, Roger, stick with me. Let me bring Don okay. Lemon back in. And Don, I know you, have, you want to talk to Roger. Roger. Hi, can we, you, you Hi, how are you? Sorry. I'm sorry. Don was, a great, yeah. Don was a great friend, and he and I attended many of Aretha's fabulous birthday parties. That's what I want to talk to you, because you talked about how much she loved New York City. Yes. And those birthday parties, and she loved the Ritz, by the way. I hate to, you know, the, she loved the Ritz Carlton. We always had birthday parties at the Ritz Carlton for Aretha Franklin. And Roger, you never knew who was going to show up. It would be, you know, Aretha was the biggest legend, but it would be one legend after another. And she just ate it up. She loved it. Oh, she loved it. We had uh, Quincy Jones and Barry Gordy and uh, Valerie Simpson and lots of famous, you know, musicians. She would hire uh, this great uh, band to play, and in, in the, in the, the lobby is a low ceiling. It's not meant for this, but she loved the room. Right. So right. Uh, we, we would have uh, um, uh, the Dizzy Gillespie band come in and, and play, and then she'd bring in, and sometimes she would showcase young musicians or new musicians mm -hmm. or new singers, somebody mm -hmm. she had heard somewhere that she really liked. And so many times, so many years, you would meet uh, new people, and they'd say, we'd say, well, how, how did you meet Aretha? She'd say, oh, she saw me on TV or she saw me here and brought me mm -hmm. to New York for this uh, event. She, was, she really yeah, liked she to did. cultivate uh, new if musicians. She, if she yeah, saw I, you anywhere in media, if it was on television, if she heard about you on the radio or whatever, and if she liked you, she would reach out to you. And that's how I got to know her. She, she called me. Um, she called someone and asked for my phone number. Uh, years ago, and then yeah. started texting me, and, and we became friends. But uh -huh. I, just, I just have to say one thing. You know the purse. She loved her Givenchy bag, right? right. Um, well, you know, the story of the bag is... That that's where the money was. That's where the money was. And she wanted was, to be paid in cash. And James Brown once told me that he had taught her this, and I, I think he did, because the, the, these uh, okay. performers so often were ripped off, especially when they were in the South, where they would right. do the show and they not get paid. So uh, what happened was she would demand the cash up front, and she would not go on stage unless she had the cash. And they would go into the bag, whether it was a Vuitton bag or some kind of famous pocketbook, and her bodyguard would bring yeah. it out and put it under the piano where she could watch it during the show. <laughs> so, and, so. and you knew that as long as the bag was under the piano, she was going to keep performing. And right. <laughs> so, you know, she you knew she'd come back for an encore if the if the bag was still under the piano. <laughs> and um, uh, one time, uh, this is about seven or eight years ago, there was something called the Dream Concert at, at for Martin Luther King, the Eye of a Dream Concert, at uh, I remember that at Radio City, and uh, they had the the pr promoters had not brought the money, and she was locked in the dressing room. And there were all a whole line of people knocking on the door trying to get in, and uh, the guy who was running the show had the you know the headset piece on, and he came up to me and he said, "Can you get her out of there?" And I said, "Is the money in the bag?" He said, "Oh no, the money hasn't come yet." I said, "She's not coming out." She's not and coming out. I opened the door just a crack, and I said, "Aretha," I said, "They're really the whole thing was that supposed to be that San, Carlos Santana was on stage, and when he finished playing Oye Comova, she was supposed to be standing on a spot to sing Respect." And, uh, she, and the guy was freaking out. I said, she will not. So the, suddenly, the, this big flurry, they bring the money in the bag up to her. The door opens. She walks out elegantly and slowly and says, you know, okay, let's go. And she just made it within seconds. Um, <laughs> well, that's, you know what that says about, that's something about that generation. She, she's the same generation. She's the same age as my mom. They were yeah. born the same year. Uh -huh. Yeah. Too. It's about that generation that came out um, of the Great Depression, one generation out of the Great Depression. Mm -hmm. And a lot of, and a lot, especially for African Americans, a lot of those artists were ripped off. And she was just fighting for her respect there. And she did that throughout her life, especially when mm -hmm. it, came to, it came to issues um, that affected people of color. So, yeah. Gentlemen, that, just nice let me. That we can put on that. Let me bring it and stay with me, uh, both of you, because these stories are, are, you know, such a wonderful way to remember her.
we're getting some other memories in uh, John Legend just writing salute to the Queen, the greatest vocalist I have ever known. Uh, Valerie Jarrett saying an incredible gift to the world that her spirit will stay with us in her music always. Um, and, and then also we're hearing from the mayor of Detroit who's also remembering her. And let's listen, you guys, let's listen to what she said um, and her, her music, her beautiful music uh, at uh, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s funeral. And then we're gonna listen to some of her interview with you, Don. So first, let's listen to her voice. And the wind drew up now. And oh, 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 all we need is a Jesus to linger right here. Most people don't know how much work she did with Martin Luther King. She did a voted voice honoring his life and his work. And then, Don, here she is with you, speaking to you just a few years ago about MLK and his legacy. When you look at the, what's happening in Ferguson, what happened with police officers, or whatever, do you think we're, your songs were the anthem to civil rights, to the civil rights movement? So many songs were Well, played. respect was yeah. a, a mantra for the civil rights movement. It was. Do you feel we're moving forward or, or fast enough? Or I think that we have come a very, very long way. Uh, we've come to the forefront in many fields, of course, entertainment, sports, and so on, but we still have a long way to go. I had earlier in the week... But we have made great strides. You think so? Yes. Because I you think. were there, you saw it, you were on the front yeah. lines. No, I wasn't on the front line, but I was with Dr. King from, from um, church service to church service. I went out on a mini tour with him when he first started. That's a line. Yeah. <laughs> That's a line. <laughs> well, I was, I was behind Dr. King, and I was a very young girl. Don, your mm. thoughts? Oh, I mean, what do you say after that? Right. Um, She's, you know, she was, she was the queen. She's the queen of everything. She's the queen of that and the queen of keeping it real. And, you know, I, what I thought was um, that Roger just kind of made me smile because during that interview, mm -hmm. um, we had to put a, her bag on a on a table because, you know, being from the she was born in the south, but then you know went to Detroit. Um, it is considered bad luck to put your bag on the floor. Sure. So it was funny before the interview we were saying, I said, Miss Franklin, we got to get your bag. We have to put it on a table or a chair. It has to have, have a place by itself because it's bad luck to put it on the floor. But I think that for, for me, you know, that interview shows the humility. When I say you were on the front lines and she said, no, I wasn't. But yeah, actually she was there with Dr. King and the music was so much of the inspiration uh, behind the civil rights movement that um, I'm not sure if she underestimated it, but I think she was being a, a bit humble right there. Mm -hmm. 